What's up, guys? Welcome back to the What's Up Everybody podcast. I'm here with my man, Sweet T is in the house, aka younger brother. Can't say little brother anymore because he's obviously you know, bigger than me. Yeah, so I lost the whole little brother part at about age eight and a half. Yeah, I concur. I concur. I remember like, in high school, we got in a fight. I was like mid 20s and I was trying to throw you around. I couldn't do it anymore. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, maybe I should stop. Yeah, trying to fight best this guy. ever since. So. Yeah, we 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 really did. <laughs> yeah, after that fight, right? You never yeah. truly know someone until you fight them. That's and right. I knew that you were and some not to be that messed I with. Won, and then he was like, I bet "All right, let's be friends." I don't know about that, but well, anyway. you know, yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, we are going to be talking about and discussing the fights this past weekend. Man, some Absolutely. awesome freaking fights, bro. Yeah, dude. Good yeah. knockouts. You know, a lot, some... a lot of good crisp stuff. A lot of good, a lot of good stuff. So, uh. Yeah, episode two. Here we go. Let's go. Let's what up, everybody? Everybody. What's up, everybody? In, in, <laughs> All right. So, again, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Be-do-do-do. Give us a thumbs up, right? Beep, beep. Thumb, thumbs up always helps the video out, always helps to, to spread the love, spread the word about us. And there's a lot of people who might not know that WB has a new podcast. I know. And there's going to be a lot of stuff on this podcast that you don't hear anywhere else. Exactly. So uh, make sure you guys spread the word, spread the word, comment, all that good stuff. But let's get into it. WB, we had fights this past week. Yes. Yes. And, you know. Good fight card. Good, good fight card. It was a good fight card. Main good. event was, uh, you know. But yeah. leading up to it was pretty legit. Yeah. So, too legit Too legit to quit. So let's start with number one. Um, we had some good some good quality knockouts. We had a couple of uh, fast finishes. Yeah, man. The first fight of the night ended with a with a solid, you know. KO. KO. Uh, a beautiful cross to, to chin stoppage. Right. Yeah. And then later on, you had Ige doing the same thing, and it Dude, happened the straight, relatively I feel fast. like the the technique of the fight card was a straight right. Yeah, super basic, but the straight right hand gets it done. It does. It you does know? get it done. It usually loses its luster to the overhand right. Yeah, it, I know. I know. You've seen that recently. I mean, what Amanda Nunes just talked about Megan Anderson with overhand right. Yeah. Well, so she, these guys, she rocked her. She and rocked her, and the, then finished her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, this this weekend's card was definitely the the straight right or left hand. You know? Straight right extravaganza. Extravaganza. Yeah. You know, you saw the knockout with the, the leg kick, right? And then he yeah. drilled him with the right hand. Great when timing. Went to throw the leg kick. Yeah, he timed it beautifully through the. And then you got Ige coming in. His opponent was super aggressive, yeah. coming in just to have a war, and it was stopped quick with a right hand because mm-hmm. he ran into it. Yep. You know, it was a short, sweet, you know, right hand that put him out for good. Hundred percent. So Ige, hats off to you, bro. Excellent timing. <laughs> It was amazing. I would not want to get hit with that, even though he's a smaller, you know, yep. smaller weighted guy. Yep. I, I think that would finish Francis Ngannou. Uh, <laughs> you're saying some questionable stuff, already, dude. Man. I know, bro. I'm, I don't I'm, know I'm, about that. Bro. I think Ige can get it done. You know, take it. If Ige hits him anywhere but in his abs, right? Ige has a shot of finishing him. But you can punch Ngannou, as I'm sure you've seen. Around the internet, you can punch Ngannou as hard as you want in his abs, and he'll be all right. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's got... That's like his new thing. One of his abs is like the size of my bicep, so... Yeah, yeah. for sure. Pretty intense guy. I'm looking to fight him next. That, that, that makes sense. Yeah? yeah. That makes if, sense. if I can tag you in. If I had a tag team partner, for sure. Would you... I'm sick that day. Oh, okay. Then yeah, I'm going to be whatever. out of town. All right, Chris Weidman, you're... Tag team. You're, a ta- you're my tag team guy no. against Francis Ngannou. I think, I, I think we can do it. I know. I, I've actually rode in a bus or an international fight week. For First off, I hope that they bring that back. International, international fight week. Yeah, so that's fun. fun so I've much a few fun. of those. A lot it's of like fun. a time for us fighters to like let our head. If you're not fighting on the card, first off, you know, just kind of have some fun. Yeah. Hang out with some fans. A lot, but of, I, lot of fan hanging, hanging outage. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless you're the guy that was chasing me and Chris Wyman around the club. What? Well, yeah, we, me and Chris had a had a fight party, an international fight week one time, and Evan was with us. My brother Evan, you know, our brother Evan yeah. was with us, and we're having a good too. time, VIP section dancing. Next thing you know, one of the fans, one of the fans that shouldn't be in VIP with us, ended up there. So we were hanging out with him, but it got weird because he kept trying to grab Chris's behind, he kept trying to grab <laughs> Chris's butt. So next thing you know, we're like running around the the club, and we're getting ready to leave, and this guy's trying to leave with us, and <laughs> and one of the. <laughs> 
Chris Weidman tells one of the bodyguards there, one of the bouncers, I guess, that this dude's following us. And next thing we know, I look back, and he, this guy's being choke slammed. <laughs> I'm like, he immediately <laughs> felt bad. We just took off running. Damn, uh, unless you were that guy, you know? Yeah, definitely don't want to be that guy. I felt well, bad fortunately, for him. 99.9% .9 of fans aren't that way. <laughs> no. I, I can't help <laughs> just looking back and seeing this dude being choke slammed. Yeah. He's like looking at us like, wait, no. help me. <laughs> Dang, dude, I never We're like, oh, God, story. let's bolt. Yeah, it was crazy. That's funny, man. It there got you. weird when he started trying to touch Chris's butt. Why yeah. just Chris? I don't know. Well, okay, it might have been both of us. You know, I think he tried to, he like pinched my butt and just started trying to grab Chris's like from then on out. I think he just, I don't know, maybe it's just. Vegas. Yeah, it's yeah. Vegas, you know. <laughs> What happens, what happens in, in Vegas, Vegas stays, stays in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. And this dude was just trying to shoot his shot he's with Chris. still in Vegas just being choke slammed. Yeah, yeah. He I'm pretty sure he's, he's he's in a gutter somewhere. <laughs> Bouncer just dropped him off, you know, just threw him out in the gutter Dang. somewhere. Poor guy. I never heard that. That's a good story. Yeah, thanks, man. That's what happens it's a good story. In, in International Fight Week. Yeah. I got a bunch of those. fight weeks are, are fun. They're so a, much fun. You got a bunch of International Fight Week oh, stories? It's great we'll ones. have to do uh, – International Fight Week well, story. Are they International Fight Week stories or are they – Summit stories. Oh, I've got some summit stories too. Yes. Like, okay, how many so, summits has there been? There's only been a few, and right? I've been a part of just about every one of them. Really? So they have. So the UFC. If you know, know what the you like, what a summit is. UFC brings in all the fighters, like all the fighters, the whole roster of fighters, in Vegas at at one, like under one roof, which is Disaster. super dangerous. I mean, all the testosterone in that one, you area. know, area yeah. could just like fuel the entire world. Of yeah, testosterone. For sure. And you got just people fighting, talking crap. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I got some stories there, too. But then he so. throws some alcohol in the mix, I'm sure. It doesn't <laughs> get any better. The one, the one story I remember hearing from the summit was when uh, was when Ally Kenta uh, did the whole, he was trying to do like a backflip on the rings or something. Dude, and, and he, he like busted. did a backflip and yeah, yeah, slipped and, off. Yeah, there was some alcohol involved in that. And he yeah. landed flat on his back. <laughs> Did he do I'm the, talking like a ten foot rings. We were talk? at the the the, the UFC uh, PI. Yeah, you know, so they had these rings set up there, and you had to be like tossed up there to even grab a hold of them. So <laughs> Ali Quinta was up there trying to do a backflip and just just bust his behind, bro. It was great. Yeah. Did he do the grape lady talk? Uh, 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 uh. No, but no. you can tell he kept it in. He kept it in. And yeah. then there was the cyborg story. But I, got, I can go all day. Yeah, I can yeah. go all we're day. Getting off topic. We yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah. We'll get sorry. into that in a second. So. Anyways, those are some, those are some good stories. Just that the cyborg story was amazing, but we'll we'll, we'll leave that. We'll for get to that day. in the next time. No, another episode. We'll yeah. have, to, I'll have to bring it back up. <laughs> uh, so moving into the main card of the fight, the first fight of the night was somebody that you've trained with, somebody that we're familiar with, kind of from the southeast. I believe Alabama is where he spends most of his time. Eric Anders coming in fighting a very tough Darren the Dentist yes. Stewart, and you know if yes. you have a nickname like the Dentist, then you're pretty tough. Yeah, either or a, tough or, or a psycho. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a psycho killer. The dentist. It's like a serial killer name. Yeah, for sure. The another, you know, attack from the dentist. Yeah. Like hits headlines. Like I feel like that's Yeah, the dentist strikes again. Mm-hmm. That mm -hmm. sounds good. Well, Scared. in this case, he was the one being struck. So it was a pretty <laughs> back and forth. I wouldn't say it was back and forth. Eric Anders came out looking sharp. Yeah. A lot of he pressure was shredded, wrestling. Dude. Yeah. Sure. I remember watching him in the way. I was like, dude, this I don't think this guy's ever been that shredded before. Yeah. Look so great. Looking Infinite. great. He was throwing hard, uh, mixing it up, going for some takedowns, just just putting it on Darren. And then – Illegal Darren, knee, man. Yeah. Darren finds himself down, another sort of obviously downed position, and throws a, a, a knee to the dome piece. Yeah. Well, didn't he, like, have his hand up there? He did get I his mean, hand up. I mean, you can say that I was trying to hit him in his hand. It's just that his head was behind his hand. You could tell that his <laughs> his target was the head. the noggin, yeah. I mean that's twice that's that's two weekends in a row. Two weekends in a row that you've seen a legal knee. I think that maybe he's just trying to throw out, you know, say, hey, Aliquinta, you're not going to be the only one. No, Aliquinta. I mean Al Aliquinta, Al Germain. Same you're, same camp. Yeah, yeah, same camp. You're not going to be the only one, man. Let me just knead this guy real fast. Boo! Yeah, let me let me take there. the heat off of you a little bit. Yeah, and we'll put it on me. Yeah. So we did it out of sacrificial. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But anyways, it ends, nice it, ends in a, it ends in a no contest. It ends in a – I believe it was a no decision, I think they said. Uh, they well, how does that no work contest. when when that you know, when that happened? Now, the Quinn, he gets the W, but this guy doesn't. You know what I'm saying? 
I think, um, I don't know. I believe it's a referee's call. It's a choice whether he wants to say it was deliberate, intentional, it was a purposefully illegal or a- technique, yeah, or yeah. if it was an accident. They, they ruled it an accidental knee to the head. Okay. Because the hand got up there and all that stuff. But, yeah, that's a good question, and I guess that's, that's something that kind of needs some clarification. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. We're going to talk to some refs. We're going to have to bring a ref in on the channel. Yeah, say, hey, get man, a ref on the cast. Where's your head at? You know a couple. I know a few. You know a few. Know so a few. we had that happen. And the fact that it happened two weekends in a row, it makes it's you wild. wonder. It's like, should strikes, head strikes, head kicks, really, knees, be legal to downed opponents like you see in some other organizations? What are your thoughts on that whole S- debacle? Super dangerous. I know that. Super. I mean, taking a full-on punt to the head mm-hmm. could definitely kill you. But, I mean, I don't, <laughs> think anybody, I don't think anybody's died yet. I mean, you see it. In other organizations, uh, it, you know, I think you'll have faster finishes for sure. You know, yeah. you get you take a guy down and you can stop him in the head. I'm doing that. I guess it just opens. And then if you, if you were to legalize that, you would have to legalize 12 six elbows. Yeah, that's true. Because a foot, you know, you, you, let's say you stomp somebody in the head. It's a 12 to six stomp. Yeah. And that's more powerful than a freak than a dang elbow healed yeah. to, the, to the to the skull. Yeah. You know. I don't know. I don't so know. What do you I don't think? Know. Would you would you be down for legalizing that as a fighter? I mean, I, you don't really find yourself in many situations where you're down and somebody's trying to true. punt you in the face. And but, there's not really like a whole lot of those situations that take place. But I mean, it, it is an, an added option when somebody's yeah. down to just flat out. I mean, other organizations are doing it. So hey, and and then and then there you there you have the old. You know, illegal need of the dome piece debacle finished. You know, you can you're it's legal now, so you can throw it. You don't yep. have any if ands or buts. It's just it's legal. It's the rule. You know, yep. I think you just go. At, you know, at some point you should start throwing weapons. Just throw like a a n- pair of nunchucks. <laughs> you know they gotta be like dull weapons. Like yeah, yeah. Like, you can't have it like, like a sharp, pair of chucks. You know, maybe like a stick. Yeah, like a bow staff. But just one. So whoever gets it gets it. I think that's the next level evolution of MMA. Yeah. It's got to be traditional, like, Okinawan weapons. Yeah. Now, not only or do you like, have to do a hand-to-hand, like, now you gotta ha- you have to, like, weapons train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be, an, that would be, uh, that'd be insane. I feel like that's something Russia should do, would, would do. They probably already do they that. They probably already are. I mean, they have the arm wrestling. The MMA. slap fighting. Slap fighting, which is ridiculous. The, Crazy. The, the tackle the team. people off of obstacles. Yeah, MMA fighting. MMA fighting, which is team insane. MMA fighting. Yeah, you just getting tackled off of like a, a ten foot block. Yeah, I do. I do like the 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 where you dress up in like a superhero suit. Have you seen that Spider Man versus Batman yeah. and Robin? Yeah, and they're usually terrible fighters too yeah. for the most yeah. part. But anyway, that's the next evolution. I think we should go. We should I'd costumes. definitely be an anime character. What anime character would you be? And don't say Naruto because it's like, or don't say Sasuke because that's like super. Obvious, like if you had to dig deep and pick one, Piccolo. It would be Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z. You would. <clears throat> number one, he looks you cool. You would dress up like Piccolo, the dude. That would guy. be sick. You know, that would be cool. That would be really cool. I think he. I think he looks cool. Um, either that, or I would say, what's the chick? What's his name? Uh, it's a video game. Angelina Jolie played her. Uh, Tomb Raider. I would dress up as Tomb Raider. You know. Short shorts. Dress up as Tomb Raider. <laughs> well, what you could say is that, that would be it would be um, it'd be anti restricting because you have like no clothes on. Yeah, it's true. You kind of already fight in that. I mean, I only fight just in shorts anyway. Top. Yeah, yeah, just had a tank and top. You'd be Laura Croft, Tomb Raider. Yeah, I think that would be cool. All right, man. You know, to each his own. You know, it's just yeah, me. I guess. I just think if I would, good. I think if I, I were that to good have to in dress it. up as a character to fight, I would dress up as. Dwayne the Rock Johnson because I feel like that's who I am. Yeah, like when I, I look can see that mirror, when I look at you in the shirt, look at that shirt, how tight it is. I have the tattoos. I, feel I like have the the height. I have the muscles. I feel like that's my my long lost twin is me and the Rock. Yeah, I can see that. I miss you, man. I can see that. We need, we need to catch up sometime. Yeah, we need we need to have him on the podcast. On the podcast, <laughs> yeah, on the podcast. On the podcast. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he'll be up for not it. Not too busy. He'll yeah, I was like, hey man, remember that one time you went to Madison Square Garden and watched? I got Wonder Boy fight. Yeah, you know, it's like who? Yeah, I'm like nodded. I'm just trying to no. sell my t- my uh, yeah. my tequila, bro. But that was illegal knee, crazy. Um, you know, getting back to the fights. <laughs> we got a little <laughs> yeah. tangent there. 
get back to the fights. Yeah, so it's just a, it's just unique. Like I said, two weekends in a row after not really happening a, a whole lot. And then there's three in recent memory, obviously, with the John Jones, Anthony Smith, and then you have the Al Joe, and then you have this one. So You can't forget the, the cost check. Knee that, that actually didn't, brutal. yeah, that was the most brutal knee ever. The, it just the didn't miss him completely. Ah. But you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. So then you got you have that fight. Um, nothing else real, real crazy happening, real standing out except really. for the main event. The main event of the evening. We had our eyes on. You had your eyes on right. watching, right? The um, eye poke, the old thumb. It wasn't thumb. It was like middle well, finger, thought, ring really? finger. Really? It went like knuckle deep in this You didn't see the picture, Dan? Oh, I posted? saw the picture. Oh, the close up? Where it was like yanking his lower oh. eyelid off of his it, eyeball. It wasn't his eye. He like had gripped the inside of his skull it with was his like finger. It it was and that's, it was the second time. He got warned, didn't mm -hmm. he? So I don't see how that was. That should have been disqualification. No yeah. It was a no contest. What? Jan was warned. He, he, threw, he did it anyways. Boom. Come on. DQ Boom. decision loss. Edwards should have been DQ'd. That's Doing twice. He got warned, did it again, done so. Done so. You know? Um, so, anyways, about that fight, l b before we get into the, you know, your thoughts on, on the whole uh, a Walter Waite scenario, what were your thoughts on just seeing him back in the first round against? Uh, he, looked, he looked really crisp. He looked really sharp. He looked fast. Um, um, I think that w that's the best shape I've seen Edwards in. Mm -hmm. for well, he, sure. had, he had you know two years uh, to two get years ready. to get ready. That's right. He was looking oh. charretted. Yeah, you know, um, with a T. His hip to shoulder ratio was amazing. You know, really appealing to the eye, kind of like yeah. Arnold. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what kind of popped in my head when I saw his physique. Uh, but his fighting skills, really, he, he, I mean, he had great timing. He, he looked very calm. He had Bilal backing up. So I, I had him winning the fight up until the point where he poked him in the eye mm -hmm. and he couldn't continue. So, uh, but anything can happen. You know, Bilal was saying he was just getting warmed up. He's typically a, a, a later round fighter. Yeah, he's got to get going. He's, he's got to get yeah, going. He's got to get going, figure out, really try to implement that pressure and that, um, that wrestling that he's known for. So you can't really say a whole whole lot out of that one no. round, other than the fact that yeah, he looked he looked decent. He looked sharp. He looked he looked good. And and you know with the 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 eye poke, there's only one thing to do, and that's to run it back. I know right. Edwards is saying he oh, he deserves the title next, but you can't get the title after being gone for two years, and then you know having a what uh, a no contest. With a poke to the eye. Come on. With an eye poke. Come on. You can't. Regardless, you can't, can't speculate, happen. oh, well, I was dominating. I was going to win that fight. You don't you know. You don't know that? Like you said, you don't know. You were dominating a First, fight. a round. Yeah. A round. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, so you know, I thought you got to run it back. I mean, that's what they're doing with, um, with Aljo, uh, and Aljo and Young. But then does that mean you got to run back Eric Anders and Darren Stewart? 100%. <laughs> Do it. All three. On the same card. On the same card. All <laughs> just all the knees. All the no. All the illegal knees ever just. has got to be on on that card. On that one card. Yeah. You know. So yeah. I'd say run it back. I know Edward's like, no nah, man, I don't want to fight for the title. But come on, dude, you haven't fought. I deserve the title more than you deserve it at this point. I'm there you saying. go. Call your shot, dude. You know what I mean? Come on, guys. I'm the only guys that even hadn't fought. Absolutely. So, and I gotta agree with you. It's me. tough. I mean, yeah, it's tough for for both of those guys, Edwards and Bilal. Yeah. Um. For that fight to end that way, but you can't be like, it's hard to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, yeah, I deserve a title shot after that. I agree. But I you agree. can't like. It. Well, for one, if I would have thought that, you and pops would would slap me into oblivion, saying, "Well, no, you're running it back with this guy." Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. No, you're you're doing something else. There's yeah. no way. You, yeah, you're not. You're not going to get a title shot for that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think uh, I think they I think they should run it back. That's just me. Yeah. Uh, I it think they should run it back at least, you know, next weekend. Yeah. He, Bilal posted there's no permanent damage to the eyeball. So once Sweet. the cut gets healed up. Then go at it again. Yeah, Stay in yeah. shape. I mean, it was one round. Well, how much damage could you have taken? Yeah, so, exactly. He did get rocked with a head kick, though, as well. Well, I mean, did he get rocked? Did he stagger? Yeah, yeah. He, you didn't see it? He staggered a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think that he, he like, all that. It, it it wasn't super obvious where he was on chicken legs, but yeah, you yeah. can tell. I mean, it landed solid. Yeah. It landed solid. Yeah. But, you know. What else? It is what, what it else? is. Run it back. And uh, give, you me fight the, the you give me the uh, fight for the belt. I like it. All right, make it happen, guys. Let's go, fans. Ha-ha! <laughs> like, like this uh, video if you think WB should fight for the belt next. Let's go. I'm trying to get, like, a um, million 
quadrillion likes. Minimum. You know, I think we're like the the second best, kind of on par with Joe Rogan podcast at this point. At this point, two episodes in. Two episodes in. <laughs> we're like, you know, what are we trending right now? We're trending top. Yeah, top podcast. In top here. podcast in the world. Coming for you, Joe. So, I was thinking about it. You fight Usman. Mm-hmm. Colby fights Gilbert. Nah, Colby fights Leon. Yeah. Say so he doesn't get the Bilal. Okay, fight fight Colby. Burns fights Kiesa. Okay. And Keep going. Masvidal just does whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Because he's Masvidal. At that point. You know what? If, if, if I fought Usman, first I'd fight Edwards or whoever deserves it next. Colby, whoever. Then I would go up a weight class, uh, several weight classes, fight Ngannou, come back down, then fight Masvidal. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. You gotta give it. You gotta. You gotta run the back. You gotta have the NMF versus the BMF for sure. Mm-hmm. That's gotta happen. That's mm-hmm. a, that's just that would be awesome. Yep. Yeah. You have two and you don't titles have, on the line. Yeah, two, the three, three titles, titles on the line. line. <laughs> three the NMF, the BMF, the and the welterweight title. I don't know. It's it's yeah. a fun. It's it's a definitely very interesting at this point. Like what what's next for these guys? You know, what is yeah. the UFC going to do with the rankings at this it, point? It was definitely one of the worst possible outcomes you could yeah. have for the welterweight division as a whole for the fight to go the way that it did. Yeah, yeah. With Leon and Bilal. I know. It's like it, it it sucks. It really does suck, but I run it back. That's the only thing you can do is run it back. Mm-hmm. So, or, or get them a fight with somebody else who's um you know, who's ready to fight or, or something. I don't know, man. I think I think Masvidal and Edwards, they got beef there. They got lots of beef. That yeah, they be, got beef, be beef there. Hit him, he, remember, Masvidal won that first fight. So right now, Masvidal's one and Edwards is zero. Yep. Masvidal hit him with that three-piece and a soda, you yep. know? What kind of three-piece do you think it was? When was like it like a Taco Bell? I mean, like, was that like a, like a, like a, like a, like a three-piece? Like, I'm, when I think about a three-piece and a soda, like a bunch of like McDonald's pots in my head, you know, is it Burger King? Is it like a Chick-fil-A three-piece? Does that not go through your head? I just immediately assumed like it was three pieces of like chicken, chicken, chicken nuggets, just okay. chicken, like fried oh. chicken. Okay. Let me get, th- let me get a three piece. Like I go to Bojangles. Let me get that three piece and a. But what restaurant has combo. three pieces of, ch- of just chicken nuggets? Why well, you typically when you get like the breast or the, not the chicken nuggets oh, or the chicken wings. Oh, like the actual. I'm thinking like chicken nuggets. No, 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 no. Yeah. You're no, like Bojangles. No, You're talking like no Kentucky fried company chicken. Company in the piece. history of ever serves three. Yeah. Pieces of nuggets. Yeah, so it's got to be like a Kentucky Fried Chicken or something. Popeyes. Yeah, KFC, Bojangles, Popeyes. Something like that gives you the bone with it. I'm hungry, bro. As you can yeah, tell. Know, I'm just making my mouth water. Anyway, uh, yeah, those were the fights, man. Welterweight division is pretty nuts right at this point. It is. It's, it's kind of kind of log jammed. Um, but for me, though, one thing that got me kind of going a little bit was how he, he continues to say that nobody in the top wanted to fight him. What does he mean? The top two people? Yeah, top. Is, because I have been constantly calling him out. Yeah. Con, what? How can you say that? Nobody in in the top wanted to fight him. I'm I'm like, bro, you could. I did. Yeah. I called you out on you know, in a nice way. Yeah, but still, you wanted to fight him. You're number know. five. I know. Maybe he means like nobody above me Maybe. wanted to fight me. Maybe. Because I think, I'm. I mean, he's what? I'm ranked what? Five. He's what? Three. Yeah. So just two spots behind him. Come on. Yeah, you could argue be be number four because you did beat Masvidal, and then you know then that's how thanks man it should go. But thanks, man. I'm a, I'm a little biased, but uh, yeah, so that kind of irked me a little bit. But it is what it is. At the end of the day, I gotta get the title fight. Yeah, at the end of the day, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson versus Usman. Let's go. Might as well. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> it's a crazy game. This MMA game. This it martial is. arts life. Speaking of which, um, there's there, a lot of. There's a lot of people out there who might not know WB's origin story. Oh, my OG Or our story. Or origin, origin story. story. So this is my little brother, by the way. My, my baby brother, Sweet Tea. And we are two of five. Two of five kiddos. Two of five kid, kiddos. My dad, uh, Papa Ridgehand, a.k.a. Pops, you've seen him in my corner. If you watched MMA, watch me ever, watch me fight. Um, started martial arts back in the 70s, man. Yeah. And Elvis Presley, it was all Elvis Presley. He was a big Elvis Presley fan. Elvis Presley did a lot of his moves on stage. He was a celebrity seventh degree black belt. I don't know if he was like legit. I don't know. Look at that, man. He, he came up with the Stars and Stripes gi, now. karate uniform. Like he you invented that. Check those out, like I used to have one. Ones. Yeah, I got a new school one a couple years back. 
not the same. Not the same. Yeah, the heavyweight game is awesome. Yeah. But that's why dad started martial arts and fell in love with it. Had some kickboxing fights, trained a bunch of fighters uh, in the 70s and 80s. Started his his gym in 1983, the year I was born. Mm -hmm. and um, Which is crazy because that means we're coming up on our... 38, 38 year year of being open as a martial arts school right. right here in the same place Cincinnati. literally started a martial arts school not even the size of our office right now like our yeah. our, our beat laboratory it's yeah. just super tiny we like to call it a beat laboratory yeah um super tiny and now we're in a twenty thousand square foot facility close to 750 students three generations come through here we got grandkids and grandparents have been through here uh which is which is ridiculous man Man. So, yeah, man, um, that's kind of where we started. We had no say so growing up yeah. uh, if we wanted to train or not. Like, we were, it was mandatory in my dad's household. It was just as important as our education to martial arts was. And we didn't miss a day. Um, you know, I, and to be honest with you, I didn't, like, I didn't like karate. I did not like going to it. But yeah. once I found out, like, I had no say so, you know, I just did it. Yeah, and because, you know, parents, adults tend to know more than their children do. Yeah. So we we were often reminded of that. A lot. Um, regardless of. Head uh, slap, you know. Yeah, just, just kicking our butts into gear. And like you said, I went through that same trajectory, and I think most people do, especially if you've decided to, to make the martial arts a part of your lifestyle. Like, it's not a hobby. I don't think it's like a recreational sport where you yeah. should have seasons or something. Like, it should just straight up be a lifestyle, something like, like something that you're constantly involved in. Um, and when you're in it for that amount of time, yeah. our whole lives, you're going to have that trajectory of when I first started, I loved it. It was awesome. I was a kid. Then I got to the point where like, oh, well, I'm not, I don't love it as much I'm kind of playing other sports and everything, but I didn't have a choice to leave obviously. Um, and then <laughs> I'm glad that I didn't have the choice yeah. because I'm still in it. Right. And obviously I can, uh, uh, attribute a lot of my success as a, as an athlete, as a person, as a husband, as a father, to what the martial arts has taught me. And I would right. not have known that if I was able to quit at age eight when I got my junior black belt. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree with you, man. I mean, you know, I, I thank him every day for for making me stick with it. Mm -hmm. And there were times where I didn't like it. There were times where I loved it. Um, and, you know, I don't have any kids. You know, I know all my brothers and sisters have kids. I got 13 nieces and nephews, y'all. So I know, but I know how I was raised. So... Yeah, man. Um, I'm glad my dad was there as a parent for me and not just my, my dad was not our friend. He was not yeah. he was not our friend, which I, I've seen a lot of parents. Oh, I want to be my my eight year old kid's best friend. Like, no, you need to be a parent first. And that's what he was to me. And I thank mm -hmm. him every day for it. So he kicked my butt, man. He kicked my butt, made me go to karate. And, you know, up until that when that light bulb clicked, it's like yep. I understood it. Like I fell yep. in love with the martial arts Absolutely. and I thank him for it every day because, you know, people don't understand the martial arts forces you to be put in uncomfortable situations and it allows you to to cope with it to be able to handle that not just in you know defending yourself but in life general yep. it, it, you know it, it allows you to be able to push through that and um, a lot of life lessons learned through the martial arts absolutely 100 percent. It, it translates into everything and i don't even know this but you know Lindsay, my sister Lindsay, fought before i did Mm -hmm. She kicked my butt for years, dude. For yeah, I got yes, I got my butt kicked, and she probably still could kick my butt. Hundred percent guaranteed, yeah, no guaranteed. questions asked. She would guaranteed. smoke you right now, any right. given day. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, she was kind of my inspiration to actually start competing. So I had my first fight when I was 15 years old. You had to be 16, but we lied about my age because my dad wanted me to compete. I fought a guy who was we didn't have there was no teen division at the time. Yeah, you know now you got kids, teens, Which is and adult awesome division. To see. Yeah, yeah, to see the that MMA and kickboxing can be a sport, can be something that you want to get good at, like football and baseball and yeah. soccer. Like you have the option to have kids want to do that instead of other things. Other things, which we didn't have growing up. Yeah, we definitely it wasn't. Didn't. It 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 was a little more prevalent whenever I was growing up because I'm you know roughly eight years behind you. But whenever you grew up too, I remember going to tournament tur uh, tournaments, and those divisions were never they were never there big, or they were, you know, there were a few kids. Yeah. But now it's it's like it's huge, which is awesome. It just yeah. shows the that the MMA is, is being, uh, you know, it's growing, 
a part of our culture now, like a, the yep. American, the fight game. It's been around for you know thousands of years, but it's like now it's like an it's like a UFC is a household name. And there's actually opportunity to create a living off of your martial yeah. arts instead of just doing it for fun and or whatever. just running a martial arts school. You can you can yeah. fight for a living. Yep. You know, which is really cool. We got we got kids in our gym that want to fight for a living. Yep. You know, they're they're training their way up, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, there was no teen division. I was 15 years old, looked like I was 12, and I was you know finding a guy who was 25 years old, 26, and 20 and 0. He was undefeated. I'm like, I look back, I'm like, you know, Dad, why did you make me fight this guy who's like 20 and 0? My first fight ever, and it was like, you know, it was a way to show you that you were better than what you thought you were. Because I'm sitting here getting beat up by my sister like every day. There's easier ways to do that. But. That's what I thought. But, you know, <laughs> Dad throwing me to the dogs. Of course, he's always been like that. Even in tests and the school, he made it yeah. harder on us. He and was, you have to. He was always adamant about making sure that no parent, nobody else could look and say, well. You take it easy on them. They're the, they're the owner's kids, so they get to do this, that, or the other. No. Uh -huh. We had to do everything twice as they hard. They felt sorry for us, much. actually. Yeah. 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 They felt sorry for us. Dad Dad made us work twice as hard. And fortunately for me, being the baby, I didn't have it as, as rough as these guys did. But, Dude, um, you bastard. No, this I still felt it, too. I still, Don't let him uh, lie to you. Don't let him lie to you. A little bit, too. I remember having to do, like, 10 push-ups when I got in trouble one time. 10 push-ups? <laughs> when I get in trouble, my dad, Pops, would make me do push-ups on the side of the mat. And he would forget about me. I'd be there for like five hours just doing push-ups, crying. Had like, you know, karate parents coming up feeding me sandwiches yeah, like and stuff, like feeling bad for out me. Out of a straw. <laughs> oh, it was great. Couldn't but stop to do nothing. I, he actually did that to me one time. Forgot about you? He forgot about me in the back. Yeah. Um, Welcome. He had this strict rule that when he was teaching class, when classes were going on, if there was a free mat space, we could not be playing on the mat. Obviously, it was a big distraction to everybody there. And plus, we were his kids, so – Whatever we did reflected on him, and I always broke that rule. I was 100% always of the time. caught playing, and I, it wasn't because I was a rebel. I would just start playing, and next thing I know, I'd be playing with a kid, and we'd be playing around on the mat, and then all of a sudden, I would like out of the corner of my eye catch pops looking at me, and he wouldn't say anything. He you just, just knew. No, he would give me the point. Yeah, the, he'd point oh, at me. Oh, that was the worst. And immediately I was just crushed. I knew I was like, "Oh crap! Why did I make this decision? Why did I choose <laughs> <laughs> this route of my existence right now and, to play uh, on this dang to, mat?" Yep, yep. He gave you when he'd be like fighting so, my friend. Why did you make me know. play? Some yeah. Why did you make me do that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's your fault. Dude, and, uh, when, when so, parents would give you the point in the eye, oh, you're in for it, dude. My, my dad, dad had the worst. Eye. Even at even look. at 38 years old, <laughs> he'll give me that look, and it scares me. Yeah, it's still I, think I have to go home to my wife and like you know cry. Yeah, just cry <laughs> in her arms. He gave me the look today. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Dude. No, but he he forgot about me one time. I remember doing like a thousand push-ups. But it, it makes you stronger fun. though, right? Yeah, I think so. I, I think if you did that nowadays, parents would be like, oh my God, it's abuse. Yeah. We lived. Come on now. I'm alive. Parents, totally. we're giving y'all good tips here, okay? Yes. On how to raise your kids. Yes. You know, beat the crap out of them. Let them know <laughs> that you love them at the same time. Mm -hmm. But hey, you got to put it on them sometime. You got you to make them fear something. Yeah. You know? It helps with the, the process. Yeah, the, the, the process for sure. Yeah. For sure. Anyway. Um, it's. Uh, it's unique because we have we have both sides of it. So we came up in it, but now we're teaching kids. Mm -hmm. And I would say that's one of the biggest um, mistakes. I, I don't want to say mistake, but one of the biggest kind of hindrances to the, the martial arts and what it's about in creating discipline and character is that when you have parents who put students in a martial arts school for those reasons, yet at home – they're not re reinforcing those at right. all. So it's like we're constantly two steps forward, one step back, right? Yeah. So the best thing you can do um, to help with the just the lasting effect of the martial arts is at home. And I'm having to do this now with my own kids, uh, my own son who just started a few weeks ago, which is awesome, is listen – Right. Like I'm this is what it's about. I agree with what they're teaching you. I agree with with what they're trying to instill upon you. And I'm going to help to cultivate that at home as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you, and I see it sometimes, too. You got, you know, um, parents, you know, once they want you to have a talk with their kid. Right. Want you to 
have a talk with the kid about something they're doing at home, but then when they get back home, the parent is allowing them to keep doing that, right? They're yeah. not enforcing it. They're not the ones, because they want to, I don't know, want, don't want to upset they them. They kind of want to, yeah, like, almost like, like good cop, bad cop. Like, they want us to be the bad guys to say, no, you shouldn't do this, but at home, it's like, right. let me just, I'll just have the karate instructor tell them no. Yeah. So it's not me. Yeah, yeah. I just wanna, but they need that. They they do. They 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 need that reciprocation at home. So Listen, that they parents, understand. And then they'll every eventually now and then they'll stop. Roundhouse your kid. Round like kick him down the stairs every now and then. Uh, I don't him. know about all that. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't do that. Especially, seriously, especially yeah. Especially nowadays. Yeah. Pick up kids need it. Yeah. Kids need it. But yeah. uh yeah, man. So yeah, we lived a martial arts life. Sweet tea, you grew up in it. Yeah, we still do. We, we it is a lifestyle. So we love it, man. My, you know, my older sister, Lindsay, married Carlos Machado. Um, they run schools out of Dallas, out in Dallas, Texas. Uh, they're all over the place, actually. He's got affiliated schools all over the place. Mm -hmm. You married Chris Weidman's sister. You know, yeah. these aren't planned marriages. Parent, pe people, people ask me that all the time. It just happened. Yeah. yeah. And now Chris Weidman is in Fortunately. South Carolina. Yeah. You know, he's got a fight coming up, Uriah Hall. Yeah. So uh, we're going to get him on the podcast for sure. Absolutely. So that's a little bit of martial arts talk for you guys. Um, and and a little you're, parenting. You're, yeah, a little parenting <laughs> tips from this new parent and a non-parent. Well, we can basically say we're parents just because we work with kids every single day. But it's really not the same. Like, you know, you have a kid. I don't see it at home. Like, you have to go home to it. I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I, I, I just know how I was raised. And I see this every day. Like, what needs mm -hmm. to, you know. What uh what needs to be done, not just in the martial arts school, or, but what needs to be going on at home too. So for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so if you're if you're interested in, in getting your kiddo in the martial arts, Bro, or, or you're it's the best. and you want that, right? We say it all the time. It's not just about learning self defense and punching and kicks, but a big part of being able to, you know, um, have just that that confidence and that oh, yeah. self esteem comes from. Um, not only what they're getting in classes from their instructors, but also from mom and dad at home being 100%. able to, to reciprocate and, and teach those respect, character courtesy, yeah. indomitable spirit is what it's all about. So yeah, man, I think it's I think the martial arts is awesome, but you got to do your research. Absolutely. You know, you got McDojos out there. By the way, go follow them on Instagram. McDojo Life is amazing. Uh, shout out to you, bro. Um, you got to do your research. Make sure that you know the school that you're going to is legit. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a quality school mm -hmm. where the instructors you know care about your your, your kid's progression, mm -hmm. and um, and just teaching good quality techniques. You yeah. know the real martial arts because there are McDojos out there, man, mm -hmm. and people don't know what they don't know. So exactly, especially when it comes to the martial arts. Yeah, it's crazy. You'll have some teacher out there doing like no touch, and next thing you know, your kid's flipping around the mat. You know yeah, what I mean? I believe them. They're getting. Yeah. <laughs> by, by chief the force, force. You know. but I'll, I'll just give you a, a tip if you're interested in a martial arts school and they have more than three locations probably a little sketchy in terms of yeah because it gets watered down after you know what i mean once you get too like t too many yeah in karate in karate in karate or, or I've in, you've seen that from in time to taekwondo time. Or, or in the the that specific like there's there's obviously our brother-in-law Carlos uh, has multiple BJJ schools, but that's kind of like a different, um, it's a different. What, what? I don't know. It's so weird, but how the martial arts works, like you don't get a whole lot of that in Brazilian. You get it every now and then, but not as much as karate. You don't get it many. I guess because karate has been BJJ around schools. for a longer yeah. period of time. And, and, and that, which is why one of the reasons karate was looked down upon in the earlier days in the UFC was because you had these McDojo lives putting out terrible students and, um, you know, wasn't putting out quality techniques where these guys could actually defend themselves in a real situation. It was crap, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I think that was a, an opportunity when the Karate Kid came out in the you know, 70s, early 80s. Yeah. It was like the time where people could take advantage of, of, of people. And who, and who doesn't want to learn how to defend themselves or anything like that? I mean, that, so that was when karate advantage. was cool. I think karate's still cool, yeah. you know? That was when karate was like, legit, everybody want to do karate because of the Karate Kid. You know, which is which is which is awesome. I still think it's amazing, but it was just a good time for people to take advantage of people. And I graded just these big dojos, man. So do your research. Do your research. People, people. Will talk. People will tell you. Re research it. You know. Um, yeah. Read reviews. Go in there. Get a vibe. Yeah. Get a feel for the dojo. You know, if they don't offer complimentary classes, then something's kind of sketchy about it. We always do that. We let our students 
try it out, try it out see. before they want to decide yeah, that this is what it. they want to do for for an extended period of time. We give them that opportunity, and um, so do your research before you yes. just sign somebody up and then buy all of this equipment that you don't really actually need at all ever uh, <laughs> on day one. Yeah, you need to buy some ninchakus, a sword, and a ninja suit. Yep, with That'd be with, a thousand dollars. Shurikens, um, and. You need to buy, you need to pay for your belts, you need to pay for your stripes and all that stuff. Yeah, you don't need to earn them, you need to pay for them. Yep, as long as you're okay. paying, you'll get the belts you'll and get the stripes. Eh, don't do that. Here, yep. you got to earn them bad boys. Absolutely, we'll fail you. you. We'll, we'll fail you. We'll fail you if you don't get your mind right. That's right, got to get it right. right. But there you have it, guys. Get your youngins in karate right now. Get your grandma. Martial arts is for everybody. It is. I don't like, if, you're, if you're a parent watching, man, I want to get into karate, but I'm this, but I'm that, but I'm hurt. Hey, the if heart. you find a good spot, if you find a good school, yeah. they're going to take care of you. There's yeah. something you can do. Like my dad, he's almost 66 this year yeah. soon, and he's still out there kicking. He ain't doing what we're doing. He ain't no. doing the crazy spending stuff, but he'll take you out just the same 100%. with that old man jutsu. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the old man jutsu. You got the old man street combined with the old man jutsu <sighs> and a, a sidearm with about five knives on him. And we're, we're, there's, not, there's no chance no There chance. is no chance So there's something for everybody in there And, and I think you were going to say The hardest part Yeah, the hardest part of, of the martial arts Is literally just stepping on the mat for the first time Yep Just stepping on the mat Step on the mat, after that, you're hooked It's fun Yeah. And, and yeah, it, it lets you know who you are real quick too I mean, there's, you know Let you know what you're capable of Absolutely. You know, put you in and a again, situation. That's one thing we pride ourselves on here at our school, too, is being more of a school instead of a gym. Right? So when you do step that, step that first, uh, step on the mat for that first time, it, you're not intimidated. You're not yeah. feel like you're left out or man. whatever. You're immediately embraced and like, hey, man, we're, we're going to bring you along with this. Because it's important to us um, that you gain the same benefits that we did. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, we're not. You're saying we're perfect or anything. We're far from it. But as martial artists, you know, we've been, we've been, we've been around for a little bit. We've been doing it for a little mm -hmm. while. Yeah. You know, we kind of know what we're doing Absolutely. here and there. Absolutely. But, so, uh, but before yeah, we get out of here, WB, we got the next fight, uh, the next big fight coming up. We have UFC 260, yes. which you're going to be doing a, um, a fight companion on the, the Twitch. Yeah, UFC Twitch man. for UFC Twitch. You got Francis and Ganu. Challenging Stipe, Stipe Miocic. Miocic once again for the heavyweight belt. Just before we get out of here, what are your thoughts on that fight? I think what you, what's your prediction? What's your let, – let's hear it, man. It you know me. what? Both guys have made – it's been a while since they fought, but it's, it, it, these guys, uh, you know they made tremendous improvement, especially after, uh, after their last uh, encounter. Stipe yeah. showed uh, superior wrestling skills, tired Naganu out. But you know Naganu is an intelligent guy. He's got good people with him, so you know he's been working on his wrestling. He's got the ability to knock you out with one punch. But on top of that, Stipe's the champion for the reason. Like he he knows what he's doing. He's a very intelligent guy as well. Um, I think I I got to go with my man Stipe. Yes, naganu has got the power to put you out, but Stipe I think is the better all around fighter. I think he's got the wrestling. I think he's got the jujitsu. He's got the striking, as you can tell, um, and the power to put you away too. So he's, you know, most of his fights have been knockouts. Yeah. Um, and his ability to adapt to opponent mid fight, like you saw his last fight with DC. Yep. He, you know, halfway through he started going to the body, changed things up, knew it was effective, and finished him. Mm -hmm. So I, I love my man Stipe. We get some war zone games in with each other, which we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get back to doing that again. But uh, yep. I got my man Stipe. Yeah, man, I, I'm a big Stipe fan as well, but Nganu is terrifying. Terrifying. He's the terrifying, he's terrifying guy. terrifying, man. I know, he's man. He's the reason that if I were to fight in the UFC, I would not fight at the heavyweight. I would do my best to cut down to 205 at the heaviest because that dude, I've stood next to him. I've been Dude is huge. He's like 6'4", like 260 just shredded. He's he's exactly like what you see online, so it's, it's insane. And I don't know. He just has this new ferocity about him. Yeah. Like you said, he's been working. I think he, of the two fighters, he definitely had um, more room, more ability, more room for improvement than yeah. Stipe did. And I think yep. he's obviously been working on that ever since then. 
So I can think we could see an upset up here. I, I think we can see an you upset. know anything UFC can happen. 260. Anything can happen. So especially we'll see. when that dude's slinging his limbs oh, around. Oh golly, I know. All, all he's got to do is just swing five times. Hope he lands one. Yeah, or, just go out there, Rosenstruck style. Literally, go, like just stampede across the mat, swing those, those tree limbs, and take you out. You can't do that against Steve Bay. Steve Bay changed the level and take you down real quick. That's true, man. That's true. So let us know who you guys think. Who you, who you in guys the comments down below? UFC who you got? Sixty. Who you got? But um. But yeah, man, that was a good podcast. I had a great that, time. Yeah, that, that's all I got. That's all we got for you today, guys. Yeah. If you like it, hope you like the the OG story. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring more of that to you guys. Um, some more summit stories, this. some more ninja stories. Oh my goodness, we got a lot of a oh lot of goodness. cool stuff that we're gonna be <laughs> telling you guys about our life, our family, the martial arts, MMA, whatever, anime, cars. We didn't even get into our our car days. Oh my goodness, our, our, our car club meets, <laughs> all that stuff. Oh. So yeah, man, you guys stay tuned. Again, if you like the content, please subscribe. Um, like this video, share it, spread share the word, it. share the love, man, go over and check us out on Spotify. If you're, if you're not on YouTube or you, you want to just listen while you work, we are on Spotify. So that link is in the description below. Go check us out over on Spotify and, uh, yeah, man, had a great time. Catch you guys later. Gators. Peace, Peace. out.